Well, hello there. I'm Jim Tube. I'm producing a short video here for you to support my article in June for Bee Culture Magazine. For me right now is April the 13th. So I'm right in the middle of social distancing and being sequestered here in my home shop. Used the time to clean up my wood shop. It had not been cleaned up in years and organize it. I planned to either shoot from there or shoot from the bee yard. Pouring rain, the wind's howling, it may hit this door here in a few minutes. There's a big fold-up door here and it rattles and bangs around when the wind hits it hard. And the wood shop was not very photogenic, so I will do that sometime later under different conditions. So here I am, once again, a talking head. What was on my mind this month is a promise that I had made to clean up my bee yard if the weather ever breaks. And a major aspect of the bee yard that's just a thorn in my side constantly is an ever-increasing pile of old equipment that needs love. The brutal fact of our bee lives is if you keep bees long enough, your equipment, just like the beekeeper, is going to age. And nothing can be done about it. You can't stop it. You can't stop aging of everything. So this equipment that starts out so new and pristine sits there over time and finally begins to fade, needs to be repainted, corners begin to rot, it's just an aspect. You're going to get around seven years on the short side, nine years on the long side from a typical super, especially deeps. And then beyond that, what's going to happen? So if any of you are new to beekeeping and you've still got nice new pristine equipment, you you need to know that this is the glory years of that equipment's life and that beyond that it's going to age, go downhill. Sits outside after all. Part of the problem is, and it's a small part, but it's a part, is that we just paint the outside of the equipment. So I'll probably get letters and responses, but it never really, with modern finishes, has been horribly wrong to paint the inside too. See that moisture percolates through the wood and then causes those joints to rot from the inside, not from the water hitting it from the outside necessarily. So you could caulk, you could do all these things that really cause you to fixate on assembling your equipment, but ultimately you're just buying short amounts of time. Your wooden equipment is going to age and is going to show signs of needing repair. So what to do with it? Well, you can cut them down into supers. You can cut off the rotted edges if it's the bottom corners. And then the problem with that is that beekeeping equipment is not designed to go backwards, to be disassembled. It doesn't work well at all to pull those nails out and reverse it. You've got to use carbide tip blades. You've got to wear face protection. You've got to do all that kind of thing to cut those deeps down. Then the handhold is not positioned quite right. And then the corner joints may not line up exactly as they did before. So over time, the typical beekeeper's equipment begins to show wear and tear. So you can't, well you can, but you really shouldn't always judge the way a beekeeper's equipment looks because it's a lost cause. It's, you're going to lose ultimately. If you've got three hives in the backyard, you can keep them clean and neat and maintained. If you've got 200 beehives, you will have old equipment. You will always have equipment that should be replaced. You will always have frames with the bottom bars pulled off. It's just a bee fact of life. It happens. Start out new, clean, pristine, and as everything ages, it goes the wrong way, and you make do as best you can. The bees are remarkably forgiving. As long as they're basically out of the weather, they're, or they're okay. They never made a long-term commitment to that particular site anyway. They're going to be swarming, migrating, absconding, moving, and the scheme of things and their instinctual lives. But beekeepers never wanted that to happen. We want them to stay right in this yard that's here to my left about 70 yards away. We want them to stay 
right there in the boxes that we provide for them and over time those boxes degrade and at some point they're done. You can give them an alternative life and I discussed that. You can make flower arrangements out of those old boxes with all that ambience and character. I took a deep high body, I bet you 20 years ago, and cut it down. It was simple to do, just cut it off at a convenient height, saw out the edges to improvise four legs, I put a brace in between, and then I've used this thing, abused this thing, for years. You can use it to prop up a utility trailer so that the water drains to the back and drains out, not toward the front, where it would accumulate, puddle for a while, cause my trailer bottom to rot. I've used it to prop up the lawnmower while I change mower blades. You can use it for whatever you want. The unintentional handhold became a spot to put small parts, screws and bolts that you were working with to keep those from falling off in the grass or rolling wherever. So this bought this thing more time. It would have been discarded all those years ago, but now it's still an ugly, misused stand that in the worst case scenario, once again, could have been used to put a flower pot on. I don't know why so much old bee equipment seems to have possibly a life left over in the flowering business. I used a lot of new supers and put bottoms on them and made drawers for them in the uh, wood shop next door. And, uh, does a good job of that. They, they too are 25, 30 years old now and have been used not for bees but for uh, putting various wood tools in, nice heavy drawers. The problem I had as a woodworker, and I've been a, I was a woodworker long before I was a beekeeper, was that you get these nice clear wood boxes already cut out with the edges already eased and they just think, well this could have been so much more than uh, just a box to go outside for bees. So I've ended up using them a lot for other things. One of them that I came up with when I was a young guy thinking that this would serve me forever and ironically it's still here was I improvised a caddy and my intent I thought would be to carry around bee smokers and matches at the time instead of the electric gas powered lighters that we have now and beetle traps, all my little beekeeping paraphernalia would be right here in my bee caddy. And as is so often the case, I found out after a few years that it did a much better job of being used to carry around flower working tools and gardening tools for scraping and scratching and a bottle of fertilizer or whatever. But nonetheless, it was a bee box alternatively used and had I been clever enough, you would have used an old box for that not the, view, not the new boxes that I used. Would have worked very well for that. So my point is, and these, this article that I just submitted, is that beekeeping equipment is going to show wear and tear. It is going to pass into disuse, and it's going to have to have something done to it at some point or another. And your equipment can really look, begin to look ratty in the latter stages of that use. You know, you could almost set up a yard and have one yard that you use to make photographs and use to show your friends and to mentor, and then some distant out-of-the-way yard can be more like the, uh, well, this is where I take old equipment to die. It seems like another lifetime ago when I was putting together an insect collection, decades and decades ago, I honestly stumbled into a commercial beekeeper's yard that I thought was abandoned, that I thought had been forgotten. It was unmowed, it was unkept, there were bees flying everywhere, the equipment was all to pieces, it had rotted, it looked terrible. So I realized quickly when I contacted the beekeeper and said, I want to take those bees from you if you're done with them and do something with them. And he told me straight away that yard was fine and that he had 15 other yards that looked just like that. Just because the equipment was not in pristine repair didn't mean that the bees were not still functional in that equipment. So we have this idyllic perception that our yards will always be well painted and neat and clean and we fight that all the time. 
especially as our equipment begins to show age. The other thing that happens is internal. I mean, we get these old frames that are just miserable to rebuild. They weren't designed to go backwards. Those uh, B boxes were not designed to be disassembled. You can't knock those corner joints apart, no matter how rotted they are. All of these things mean that we end up with equipment in a pile that it's something good is going to happen to it. Maybe we'll repair it and it'll be better than new. That ain't going to happen. Maybe we'll end up figuring out how to make a flower stand for it. That might happen. But no matter what happens to it that makes it something else for a while, even then, as in the case of my old deep high body stand, it begins to get abused and torn up and needs something even as a utility stool, even as a flower pot. Something's going to have to happen to it. Ultimately, most of that should become kindling for my wood-burning stove over here on the other side of the shop. Ultimately, it is going to go away after, like I said, about seven years for deeps, probably not much more than nine years before it really begins to show need for extensive repair. My point I'm trying to make here with you is that at some point it has to go away. So it's an aspect, it's an attribute of beekeeping that the equipment does not have an unlimited lifespan. It is going to require maintenance and repair and once maintained and repaired that too is going to fail. It's an aspect of beekeeping that's not widely discussed. Do something with the equipment, let it go as long as it can, hide it somewhere else in a different yard, do whatever it takes to standardize your equipment as per your personality. What can you live with? Hey, thanks for watching. Go out someplace now and clean up some old bee boxes and put bees back in them. I'll see you next month. Until then, Jim to you telling you bye-bye.